Order Glory Carriers Volume 13 today. A seven CD teaching set by Matt Sorter Ministries with your love gift of $45 or more. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or visit mattsorter.com. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of Matt Sorger Ministries. Today, we hear secrets from our glory panel with Christian leaders James Gall, Roland Baker, and Bonnie Chavda. Welcome to another amazing episode of Power for Life. We're going back into our glory panel discussion with James Gall, Roland Baker, and Bonnie Shabda. You know, it's very rare when you get generals in the faith in a public setting having an open and honest, transparent, heart-to-heart -heart conversation and dialogue in front of a crowd of people. But on today's show, we're gonna learn secrets to entering in and living in the presence of God from some of the greatest leaders in the body of Christ today. Uh, the presence of God, you know, if we're not careful, the glory, the presence, the power, the, becomes an it. They become its. And we're always after it. And for me, that doesn't quite do it. It doesn't matter how glorious the miracle or the phenomena or the feeling or the beauty. I mean, the sunsets are glorious. The, Sky is glorious, animals are glorious, flowers are glorious, everything about the world that God created is glorious. We see the glory of God everywhere, all the time. But all those things are still its. So, just a little word. It's not the glory per se that we're after. It's still our experience of Him. Our relationship with Him is always relationship. And that relationship manifests itself in glorious terms, but that's not where our heart's set. I, I just, I'm after much more than seeing the dead raised. Yes. I'm after much yes. more than gemstones and feathers and colors and smells. And I'm after much more. These are things are fantastic, but they were never meant to replace God. And it's just a word to concentrate on what God wants you to concentrate on. You can imagine a relationship where people are so impressed with your artwork and your power and the things you do and your gifting and your music and your, whoo, wow, glorious, everything's glorious. But you want them to love you. <laughs> whoo, that's when you're really free. You're in the glory all the time. <laughs> and I can think of so many things that I would call absolutely life-changing, fantastic experiences I've had in God, but hard to pick one. <laughs> but I'll just pick one. My first trip to Toronto, 1995. <laughs> it wasn't any particular doctrine. It wasn't any particular speaker. It wasn't any particular theme. I just showed up and got overwhelmed by the, just what everybody else is getting overwhelmed by, just the basic truth of the gospel. It's all true. Everything in the Bible is true. We're actually going to heaven. Jesus is real. All the, we're going to get every desire of our heart, everything we dare dream of ever, ever in our heart, ever, 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 is all going to happen. Everything God ever put in us, every desire we ever had, every longing, every thrill, every, anything and everything that ever made us excited is actually going to happen. I was just up and down the aisles. I don't remember a thing about the meetings. I was sobbing and crying and laughing and blasted and wrecked and ruined and just creating a huge scene up and down the aisles and up all night. Couldn't wait to get to church. I repented. I was so deeply convicted. I spent $2,000 to call Heidi. I, I thought I was a nice husband when I got there. <laughs> Sobbed all night. I felt so sorry for this and that for you. On and on and on and on. 
And everything became, I was so sensitive, everything was either funny or sad or made me cry or laugh. And, and <laughs> it was so deeply emotional. I didn't want to argue theology, you know. Just, just don't get into any disagreement with anything, buddy, buddy, about anything. Because if you did, the, the feeling of, the feeling would leave, you know, and you're all by yourself you know, again. <laughs> didn't want anything to ruin the atmosphere, you know, going a whole month without a theological discussion for me was glory. <laughs> I was there a month, you know, and I flew home. I was so sensitive to everything. I put on the airplane's music system, and they're singing the Messiah, and I sob like a baby in the airplane, you know, with no, pay no attention to anybody, and I walk through shopping malls and Christmas, and somebody's singing Christmas carols about Jesus. Oh, just wiped out, you know, just, <laughs> everything wiped me out. Everything was just, everything wiped me out, and, <laughs> and then <laughs> I found out that God, God was actually in a very, very good mood. <laughs> <laughs> An extremely good mood. <laughs> and I just lost my serious, heavy approach to all things spiritual. And I'm so sorry. So, okay. <laughs> I want to add to this because, to me, this is one of the greatest keys. Is what you just talked about is the goodness. Because, see, you mentioned Exodus 33. And you talked about the attributes, but there's one attribute that God highlighted in Exodus 33. When Moses, when God said he let his glory pass by, here's what he told him. He said, I'll let my goodness pass before you. And in this generation, in this last decade or so, one of the God's God's always been good. But one of his attributes that has been being highlighted for us in this last move of God is the goodness of God. And we, we little flippantly, but in wonderful joy, say that God's in a good mood. But it's more than a mood, because moods swing. It's an attribute of character. God is good all the time. And this understanding is a key to walking in the glory realm is an yes. understanding and experience yes. the goodness of God. That's, that's awesome. Uh, Roland, I have a question for you. Because I was in Africa there and I was able to see the types of things that you and Heidi walk through there. Um, It's not always easy. There's stressful moments, stressful situations. Like the day we arrived, there was... (laughs) Like the day we arrived, Heidi was having a death threat. See, people might not realize what they go through out there on the field, but there was a death threat to some men uh, coming and to attack or whatever. And, you know, there's pastors, there's, there's, you know, floods, there's pastors that die there's you know there's things that happen that you guys walk through as you're walking through what you walk through um and even you know you're you're going on outreaches into the jungle you're taking boats you're taking planes you're constantly moving Mm -hmm. you guys were not just sitting there (laughs) worshiping i mean you were doing a lot more than just sitting around worshiping so um in the midst of all that, how do you and Heidi stay connected to the presence of God amidst all of your activity and amidst the sufferings and amidst the, the stuff that you see and walk through there in Mozambique? I don't know. not my fault (laughs) I'm not going to give anybody any spiritual keys because I don't have any (laughs) 
the grace of God, you know. I, <laughs> I mean, I can say things, but, you know, I don't have this huge division between prayer time, worship time, you know, devotional time, Bible reading time, preaching time, ministry time. It's all a flow. It's all together. I don't disconnect from God. We, we know. Paul says, pray without ceasing. What part of without ceasing don't you get? <laughs> I, I, I learned from the persecuted church in China, prayer is like breathing. If you stop, you die. <laughs> You're just constantly connected. That started actually on one particular day in Dana Point, California, on one night in about 1976. Poof, in one day I realized what it was like to be connected. Just be connected. Just connect and stay connected. That's just it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can be racing, running, working, flying, preaching, fixing generators, digging out of mud, whatever. You're, it, you're just as connected no matter what you're doing. There aren't special times, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can say things. <sighs> in Pemba, for instance, in particular... It's really fun for me every day to swim. Get out there far away from the ocean where nobody can get you. And, <laughs> and, and it's really fun for me to fly. It's my prayer cathedral in the clouds. I just get way above all the crises down there. And it's just, uh, just lost in the clouds, you know, skimming over the overcast and the white fluff of by moon, full moon and, you know, and all that problems down below you don't even remember and you're just lost and... And one time I was flying with Supraza and praying for the hand of God to protect us. And he sees a huge hand come down out of the sky under the plane and just hold us the whole entire flight. And you never know when these moments are going to happen. They can happen any time. Uh, for Heidi, one time she was being ministered to by a ministry team at Reading. And she just bust out laughing her head off for just the longest time. And because God had told her... My favorite time with you, Heidi, is not when you're preaching in the villages and you're leading thousands to the Lord and you're healing the sick. It's when you're out snorkeling with the fish. <laughs> That's my favorite time with you. <laughs> you just, you and me, you know, snorkeling. Yes, you know. <laughs> and yeah, you know, God's a person too. <laughs> And him, instead of asking what's my favorite time with him, let's ask what his favorite time is. And, and sometimes he just loves for you to cancel a conference. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I get some time with you. Oh, joy. <laughs> he's thrilled with some intimate time with you. Oh, my gosh. That's what he's been waiting for. Sometimes I think Jesus is the most lonely person in the meeting. <laughs> We're talking about the glory and the power and the miracles. And he's saying, hey, I'm here. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. It's just a flow. You know, you never get out of, get away from him. You can't, you know. Sorry. <laughs> That's perfect. It's all incorporated together. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I want to open a question up. <laughs> So the whole panel, because we're talking about cultivating the presence, mm -hmm. and Roland, you touched on mm -hmm. it becoming just a part of everything. It's just all flows in and yeah. out. Um, what are some practical things you guys can share with folks here about your private life, how you privately cultivate the presence of God? Who are you asking? All of you. <laughs> <laughs> secrets to living in the presence of god and so much more you can get the full unedited uncut version of this glory panel discussion with james gall roland baker and bonnie shavda you are going to want to get the whole thing and where is it found it's here on our glory carrier conference set along with all the preaching and teaching that these great men and women of god share during this conference Watch this clip now and learn more about our Glory Carriers Conference. 
You're called to be a glory carrier, to carry the presence of God that releases signs, wonders, and miracles. You have to get our Glory Carrier Conference at Volume 13 with Bonnie Shavda, Roland Baker, James Gall, and myself, Matt Sauger. You'll learn how to carry a sustained revival. You'll learn how deliverance and transformation works. You'll hear from Roland Baker on what's the point? Why do we do what we do? And James Gall will teach on when the Spirit comes in power and how to contend for your prophetic promise. And I'll teach you how to be clothed in the glory of God. God wants to clothe you, empower you, and do you with His supernatural presence in you and through you to the world around you. Order Glory Carriers Volume 13 today, a seven CD teaching set by Matt Sorter Ministries. With your love gift of $45 or more, call 1 877 God 3131 or visit mattsorter.com. Now, I know if you're watching today and you're spending this time with me, I know that you're hungry for God. There's a hunger on the inside of you that says, Holy Spirit, I love you and I want my life to be a habitation of your presence. That's right, Matt. Many of your listeners would enjoy Visitation to Habitation, a three CD teaching set on moving into the greater glory. I teach you prophetically what the greater glory of God is. I teach you how to tarry and wait on the glory. And I teach you how to guard that place of habitation in your life. So go and order this teaching series today. And I know that you will be super blessed in cultivating His glory in your life today. Turn your periodic visitation from God into a life-changing habitation of God. Order Visitation to Habitation now. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or go online at mattsorger.com. Hi, this is Mahesh Chavda, and I believe we live in a very strategic hour where God is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. And I believe that Matt Sorger is one of the vessels that God is using in a very special way to bring His presence, His anointing into people's lives. And I'm so glad that I can say about my good friend Matt Sorger that he's a man of God, a man of integrity, and the anointing of revival glory is flowing through this ministry in a special and wonderful way. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, because I don't know a BC, like most people know before Christ. I don't know it before Christ. Because my mother dedicated me to Jesus before I was ever conceived, when I was born. And, and you guys have heard me say for years, I, when I was born, one year later, when after my mother had a miscarriage, I came out of my mother's womb, waved my hand, and said, Hallelujah. And, I, and that's a joke, but and there's a truth to it, too. Because that's all I've ever known. I honestly have had a supernatural grace on my life, like, because I was born of an Elizabeth. Well, all I've ever known is Jesus. And so, what happened for me happened in my childhood. And I really don't do much different today than I did in my childhood. I grew up in a Protestant Methodist church in a little bitty town, and I always loved singing. I sang from the age three on, and one of my favorite hymns was, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tear breathe there none other has ever known 
I grew up believing those songs. And as a child, would go on long walks. I would walk the railroad tracks for hours. And I would talk to the clouds and talk to God. And I believed in simplicity that God talked back to me. And I believed that that was normal Christianity. And I didn't have enough Bible cessationist teaching taught me that I was wrong. So I grew up with an imprint that I know, and a lot of people tried to fix it. I grew up with an imprint that Jesus was my best friend. Now, when I married, Michael Ann did not become my best friend. She became my second best friend. She was my second best friend. My partner, my lover, and my second best friend. And when she departed, I laid my hand upon her and I said, I give you back to the one who gave you to me because I was never your first boyfriend anyway. I was always your second. And I give you back to the one that first loved you and I give you back to your first boyfriend. Now folks, listen. So I speak intimately, transparently. Do I miss her? Of course I miss her desperately. But I want you to know something. Though we were partners, I never lost my best friend. Because my best friend is still by me. He's the paraclete called alongside me. He is my companion. He is my friend. He's the first I've turned to all my life. And he is the first that I will turn to the rest of my days. (laughs) Bob Jones said one time years ago, I thought it was so weird. (laughs) And I resemble it now. He said one day to some of us, he says, that young man, Jesus, he's the strangest man I ever met. Anyway, that's interesting. (laughs) So we get to spend the rest of our lives discovering the wonder of who he is. And he is our friend. Amen. Amen. What are, uh, Bonnie and uh, Roland, what are some things that you guys do privately to cultivate the presence of God in your lives? Well, I have two deep, dark secrets that nobody's ever figured out in 2,000 years. (laughs) One's read the Bible. (laughs) The other's to pray. (laughs) When all, when all else fails, you know. <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, it's stupid. No, keep it, kiss. Keep it simple. <laughs> I just wanted to know, have you ever met a normal prophet? So, uh, are there normal additions? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> that song he sang was actually my, is my favorite song since I was a little kid is what comes to mind all the time since I was a little kid and I grew up in my grandfather's lap and oh my gosh you can't get away unsaved (laughs) I just never can't remember ever not believing in God I mean I I got super convicted one time and ran forward in a Baptist church but I never Never knew that God didn't exist. (laughs) 
But Bible school was my biggest enemy. <laughs> so, suddenly you started reading the Bible to pass tests and to write papers and to establish positions and to win arguments and to impress and to get good grades and to impress teachers and, and to get a degree and... It was always homework. It was always an assignment. It wasn't until I got my biblical studies and Greek degree that it dawned on me maybe I should read the Bible to get to know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I know if you're watching today and you're spending this time with me, I know that you're hungry for God. There's a hunger on the inside of you that says, Holy Spirit, I love you, and I want my life to be a habitation of your presence. That's right, Matt. Many of your listeners would enjoy Visitation to Habitation, a three-CD teaching set on moving into the greater glory. I teach you prophetically what the greater glory of God is. I teach you how to tarry and wait on the glory, and I teach you how to guard that place of habitation in your life. So go and order this teaching series today, and I know that you will be super blessed in cultivating His glory in your life today. Turn your periodic visitation from God into a life-changing habitation of God. Order Visitation to Habitation now. Call 1-877-GOD-3131 or go online at mattsorger.com. September 12th to the 14th, Matt will be at the New Day Church in High Point, North Carolina. September 20th to the 29th, Matt will visit the United Kingdom, Scotland, England, and Ireland. October 6th to the 19th, Matt will visit Australia in four separate locations. Come experience the glory. You know, you don't have to just have a momentary visitation of God in your life where God comes and touches your life, but then it fades and you just go back to the same old, same old. God wants you going from glory to glory. He wants you ever increasing in His presence, in His anointing, in His power on the inside of you and on your life. And I really encourage you, take advantage of the resource that we're going to put in your hands today. It's called Visitation to Habitation, Moving into a Greater Glory. God wants your life to be a habitation of His presence. And there are secrets to living in the presence of God. I don't want you settling for a mundane life. I don't want you settling for mediocrity in your life. I want you to go as high as you can in God and be as full of His power and presence as possible. You can have a holy habitation of God. God's manifest presence in your life. Take advantage of this resource. Sow it into your heart so that you can learn the secrets to living in God's presence, not for a moment, but for a lifetime on a daily basis. We need your power. Change your world. Partner with Matt Sorger Ministries.